Late Night City with Pete Price, Beyond the Dark. Hello, Kevin. Hello, Pete. You okay? I'm all right, mate. Now, you're local, aren't you? This is a local group. Yeah, we're only from Everton. I'm based, well, based in Liverpool, like mainly, yeah. Now, what's it all about? Yeah, well, we are. We, we look into the stories that are well-known by a lot of famous writers, and we tell the truth behind them, but we also do, we've got resident psychics, so we do like a couple of psychic nights, and we go into people's homes as well if they wanted to do a private investigation and to cleanse the home if they've got any bad spirits. Let's start at the beginning. Where's your involvement and why are you involved? Yeah, I'm the founder. I, I started off just under two years ago and I was looking at... Uh, we went on one of these tours around the city. Mm-hmm. And I, I got really interested and looked in a few of the stories and found that I found different to what I was being told. So I started looking to, into them deeper. And that's when you start finding out a lot more than than what's already involved, if you know what I mean. Now, when you were growing up, were you interested in the paranormal? Yeah, yeah. I think I seen the first ghost, so to speak, when I was about 13. My dad was in the Royal Hospital and um, he had an heart attack. So I went in to visit him, got the lift down up at the first floor to go and get some sweets. And as I walked out the lift, there was just shadow figure in front of me. And after that, I was I was gripped, yet scared. Do you know what I mean? How old were you? About 13, I was. Did you tell anybody? Oh, yeah, I told my mum and dad. And uh, they could see that I, I was clearly shaking. And apparently my dad asked one of the nurses who informed him that the first floor used to be the old mortuary. So that was your first experience. Now, have you had lots of experiences through your life? I've had, I've had a fair few, yeah. I've had, especially when we do, like, if we do investigations in people's houses or in, like, St. James's Gardens, places like that, that's really active. What I don't understand, Kevin, is somebody like you, it can happen to. Somebody like me, who's around the periphery of it, it doesn't yeah. ever happen. Why do you think that is? Because I, I, if you're, it normally happens if you're not looking for it. Do you know what I mean? We can go down to supposed active locations, yeah. spend several hours there, and not find nothing. Do you know what I mean? It, it's only, I can tell you honestly, it, I've only ever seen four spirits since we've since I've been. Well, well, since I was 13. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's, the amount of time you spend on it, it's not like, oh, you go down and you see something. Yeah. It's it's very, very rare. So it's you when you don't expect it. Yeah, it's yeah. when you're not looking for it. Like, if we're setting up, someone will say, did you, or they'll catch something. Yeah. But when you set up, nine times out of ten, you're looking and waiting and waiting, you can not get nothing. Mm. Kevin, tell us about your other experiences. Yeah, we've had, all, we've had different ones. I work with a medium whose name is Darren, and he he done a a manifestation, so to speak, and you could actually see a spirit face over his face, which which like freaked me out. Thought you know what I mean? Because I've never delved into the side of the psychic side. If you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I've only ever done it from the point of view of I look at it historically. Like I work with Steve Bins on a few events, so I I, I look at it from the logical point of view. Do you know what I mean? Now you mentioned before. Uh, you want to do blow the myths on the stories in Liverpool. Yeah. Now, there's some very, very big stories. Uh, yeah. Have you upset people by doing what you're doing? I wouldn't say upset. I mean, the, the, no, one of the probably the most biggest stories is William McKenzie, who, who is believed to be sitting up inside the pyramid on Rodney Street. That's right. I'm sure yeah. you're aware of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, well, I looked into it, digged in, and he's not actually sitting up inside. He's buried below with his two wives. Now, when we first publicised that, you, not a lot of many people believed us, do you know what I mean? But going on and on, even like Wikipedia, if you Google his name, it was telling you that he was sitting up inside. But I actually got that changed. I, I got the fact, I got the fact out the Central Library and provided them with the basis that he's actually buried underneath. So how did you find that out? And why, why did you question it? It seemed too good to be true, really. <laughs> If someone's sitting up inside of a pyramid, it makes you want to find out why. And I know the, the, the legend goes that he was gambling and lost his soul to the devil. But it was it was quite as simple as, if you go looking on Find My Past or Ancestry, you realise that the pyramid wasn't put up for 17 years after he died. So unless they dug him up and sat him like that in a position after he'd been buried for 17 years, do you know what I mean? Have you found any other stories in Liverpool um, to be non-factual? 
yeah, the, the, the famous story of uh, like Elizabeth Pierce, the young girl who was murdered in Cullen Road in Toxteth, and there's a well-known story that she's seen in a cloak walking up and down. And the story behind that is actually not not factual. I researched it myself, and it, I'm public, putting it online on my Facebook page next week. It's a completely different story that's based on facts and like coroner's reports and newspaper clippings to the one that's doing the rounds. So do you think there's a lot of phonies in this town? No, there's not a lot of phonies in the town. Do you know what I mean? It's different people do it for different reasons. If you've got famous people, like famous people, they want to do it just to sell boots or they want to do it just to make money. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Any stories I write, you just go right on my website, right on my Facebook page. I don't publish them. People can look at them and go, yeah, and people can look at them and go, no. Do you know what I mean? But when I'm looking into a story, I'll make sure I've researched it to the best of my ability, be it through the archives or anything like that, before I actually put it out there. Do you know what I mean? I'm talking to Kevin from Lionheart Paranormal, uh, and it's a Liverpool-based group, and it sounds really quite fascinating. Are we steeped in Birkenhead and Liverpool in history uh, of, of ghostly things? Yeah, definitely. Especially, I was over in Birkenhead Priory last week and we've done like a short little documentary there, only for YouTube. And it's amazing when you stand in there. It's so active, you can feel it. Now, there's that many places you can go to and say, oh, that's haunted, that's haunted. What people don't realise is there could be a supermarket built on an old site of, say, a church or... I don't know, a graveyard that no one knows about, and it'll be act- just as active in there than in a graveyard. People mm-hmm. tend to go to graveyards looking, but you'd be surprised the amount of people that get in contact and say, oh, my shop, or oh, the supermarket by mine. Yeah. Now, I want to give you a challenge, uh, if you don't already know. We've been what? told that Radio City was built on a grave uh, where they put a lot of bodies who had um, a, a plague. Now, we yeah. don't know whether it's true or not, and I'd love you to find out. Yeah, I will. I'll look into that for you, because the only, the only place I know for fact that by, by Radio City is, do you know St John's Gardens? I do indeed. Well, that was used for a cholera pit, and that was uh, a graveyard up until they decided to put it into a garden. So I don't think it's stressed as far as Radio City, but I'll definitely look into it for you. Great. Now, Kevin, tell me, when you want to go to places like the Priory, how do you go about it? Is it difficult if you want to go to the cathedrals or anything? Is it a problem? It, it can be, because if, you, if you're telling people who do you think, do you think you're a ghostbuster or bring them bad stuff, and it's not the case. If, like, the, like the Priory, when I've been over the past few times, it's merely for research and looking into it. Do you know what I mean? We haven't gone over with any, but any like medium or anything. It was just a case of going over and finding the history on the place before we look at doing anything else, do you know what I mean? Do you do tours? We do now and again, yeah. yeah. We've we, we done a few last Halloween, and we do them very, very rarely. We've done a free one last year in St John's Gardens, and we've done a couple of free ones down St James's, but we, we don't tend to do tours as in, like, spook, if you know what I mean. It's yeah. more history-based. Because on the 27th of August, I've got an event with Steve Binns in Liverpool Central Library, and it's actually called Liverpool Mitts, so we're talking about Mackenzie and Huskinson and people like that. And that's a free event. And it's completely sold out. But if you go on the link, we're putting another night on as well. And as I say, it's free. Now, did you get permission to do that? Was that difficult? No, that was fine. I had a, a, a meeting with the manager of Central. Mm-hmm. And he was he was more than happy. What we're doing is we're just talking about the stories that people believe to be true. Yeah. That myself and, and Steve know not to be. Kev, what do you believe happens? Uh, um, first of all, I'll ask: Are you religious? Not, not, no, I'm not religious. I'm, I believe, but I'm not religious. I don't go to church. Right. You know what I mean? right. So, what do you think happens when you die? In your opinion? <laughs> in my opinion, I think if you die and you, not so much of you being a good person, you do go to heaven. But if you've got a unfinished task or something you need to do, I think you will try your hardest to do it before you can rest. I don't, I don't, I don't believe in all this. Where oh, you come down and go back up, come down and go back up. Mm-hmm. I think if you've got a purpose, you'll try and like like the film Ghost. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I know that sounds stupid, but if you've got a purpose that you need, no, to that's do, an interesting point. So uh, he had to do something, and then when he did it and got the murderer sorted, he then said, "It's time to leave." It's time to leave. Yeah, I think once once they've done what they've got to do, yeah, 
But there is diff- there's all different types of spirits. I mean, there's like residual. Now, that'll be somebody you'll see over and over and over a certain time or a certain date. Now, sometimes people like that don't know the past. If it's mm. been maybe a car crash or something really quick and tragic, it'll be an, like an energy that's just reliving and reliving and reliving. What's your opinion on witches? There's many covens in Liverpool, I believe, that there's, there's a lot of practice on witches, but witchcraft is not what we think it is. It's, it's, it's a religion, almost, you know what I mean? It's, it's not like... They sit round the cauldron with a black cat and sit on a broomstick. There's a lot of white witches who, who do go like a lot of good stuff. Do you know what I mean? They do a lot of white spells and charms. It's not all necessarily like black magic. Interesting, interesting. So when you um, go out and about, um, do you do you ever get nervous? Oh yeah, terribly. <laughs> Even like if if somebody says, "Oh, we've seen something in the house," what we do is. We set up a, a report, like a report form, so I meet them, see what's been happening, and then I give them like a, a notepad just to say for the next two weeks, write down anything that you even, no matter how small, and then we'll, we'll get together, look at it. But we don't, we don't charge for anything like that. Right. It's just to help people out, you know what I mean? But you get, you do get nervous when you, especially if it's something that you don't think is a nice, nice energy. Do you ever um, get scared? Yes, yeah, we'll get scared. No matter, no matter where we go, it's, it's always the first. The first minute you enter, you you have know, got palpitations and stuff. But once you settle in, and you realise, because I've, I've, from what I've seen and what people have told, I've never heard of anybody being harmed by a spirit. Do you know what I mean? So it's not like you've got to be like petrified. It's it's not like that. Do you think there are wicked spirits out there, or mischievous spirits? Yeah, there are mischievous ones. I'm on a, a community radio on a Friday, and the, the, the lad I'm on with there. He had one for years called Charlie, and it used to like hide stuff, and he'd be looking for his car keys, and they'd be gone, or he'd be say hammering and doing DIY, and he'd go for the hammer, and the hammer would be gone across the room. There is playful ones, do you know what I mean? There is all, there's all this, it's like there's all different types of people, there's all different types of spirits. It's really interesting. So, what have you got coming up, and how can they find out more about you? <laughs> yeah, we've got, as I say, in Central Library, we've got the free talks with me and Steve, and. If you go to our Facebook page, which is Lionheart Paranormal Investigators, there's all the, the links will be on there and the information. But it's easy. But if you want to just give us an email, it's lionheartparanormal at gmail dot com. And to, as I say, just check us out because we have got loads of stuff that we do tend to do. It's not just based in Liverpool. I mean, my page we'll just put stories from America, Mexico, Canada because it's got like a, quite a big fan base all over the world. Do you know what I mean? When you've been out and about. Uh, have you come across children at all? Spirits? Yeah. Very, very rare. Only in St. James's. We've been down a couple of times with, with a medium who said that they've seen a, I think it was a young girl, putting flowers down by one of the graves. But any, anything like that, there's a, a famous story about little Grace in St. James's and we went down and it, I don't know if you've heard that yourself. No. No, she, there's like, on one of the brickworks in St. James's Cemetery, so it's just a little sign saying little Grace been carved in. And there's all different rumours how she got there, how she didn't get there. And we went down with the medium asking her questions and stuff. And it, to be honest, she wasn't happy that she was buried behind the wall. The footage is on YouTube if anyone wants to see it. Mm-hmm. So after that, we, we ended up, we said, well, listen, she's not happy. We don't want to... It's like me being in someone's face constantly. We ended up there. We always be respectful, do you know what I mean? What's the worst story you've ever heard involving spirits? The worst I've ever heard? I've only ever heard one off my dad, really, and that was in Sackville Street in Everton years ago. It was a lady who apparently had a malevolent ghost, like a, like a poltergeist almost, and she got carried down the stairs by her and out onto Ross Common Street. That's the, I've never heard anything overly wicked about ghosts, as I say. Nine times out of ten, they're not to be scared of. It's, it's just more the atmosphere. How much, in your opinion, is real and how much is fake? Because people are making a lot of money out of it, aren't they? People make a hell of a lot of money, yeah. I, t- I think, if I'm going to be honest, I think probably 80% of it's all fake. I think it, it's quite easy for anyone to say, oh, I've seen a ghost here or I've seen a ghost there or just write a story, do you know what I mean? It, it's when it, it's hard to get concrete evidence and say, listen, that's that, do you know what I mean? How can people find out more about you? 
yeah, go onto our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Lionheart Paranormal Investigators, or our website, lionheartliverpool.weebly.com. And as I say, that's got all local stories on there, videos, links. There's, there's, there's a mix of stuff, to be honest. Kevin, I look forward to you getting back to me to tell me whether Radio City is built on a pit with lots of dead people who died, sadly, of the plague. I will. And another thing as well is, whoever thought, because plague wasn't that big in Liverpool, it was the cholera more than it was. So, so it might, will, be, might be the cholera then. Might be cholera. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely look into it for yeah. you and get back to you. Thank you for joining me. Thanks a lot. Late Night City with Pete Price on City Talk 105.9.